In this Cinevarsity Quick Tip, we'll take a closer look at how substances are mapped into the Cinema 4D material system. And Cinema 4D has a basic mapping that it uses to translate the typical outputs from substance into the Cinema 4D material system. And you can find more information about that mapping within the help in the Substance Asset Manager page. The mapping pretty much makes sense. Diffuse and base color will map into Cinema 4D's color channel. Emissive outputs map into the luminance channel. Height outputs will map into displacement, and so on and so forth. The resulting material is also influenced based on whether Cinema 4D determines that it is a metallic or glossy material. If a material has base color, metallic, and roughness outputs, Cinema 4D assumes that it was created with the metallic or roughness workflow in Substance Designer. And it's going to create reflectance layers that attempt to approximate the output from that workflow. If the substance has diffuse glossiness and specular outputs, it's going to use the glossiness workflow, which creates a different set of reflectance layers. Let's take a look at how this works in practice. If we simply drag a substance from the asset manager over an object or into the material manager, it's going to use that default mapping. It's going to automatically determine whether it's a standard glossy or metallic material. And so we can see that the result here is that this metal material has created a metallic reflectance setup. You have two reflectance layers for a dielectric base for now and a metallic or conductor base for now. If you want to override Cinema 4D's automatic determination of the type of material, you can manually create the materials using the Create menu here in the Asset Manager. So make sure a substance is selected and we can create a standard material or a glossy material. And now let's take a look at the standard material. You can see that the reflectance channel is completely disabled. If we choose the glossy material, the reflectance channel includes a glossy layer and this layer has a very high index of refraction based dielectric Fresnel. Now, of course, all of these are just starting points. They're just feeding the substance outputs through substance shaders into appropriate places within the material system. You can, of course, go in and create your own substance shaders and modify these materials from here. For instance, if you're creating a metallic material, it's often a good idea to turn off the color channel. And that's going to give you the metallic experience that you'd expect based on Cinema 4D's reflectance workflow. Another key thing to keep in mind is that when a substance defines displacement, Cinema 4D will map the displacement output or the height output into the displacement channel, but it does not adjust the default height or type of displacement. So in many cases, you'll need to adjust the displacement height and also switch the type to maybe intensity so the displacement only goes in one direction. You might also need to enable subpolygon displacement. The last thing I'll mention with regards to material types is in the preferences, you will see a create material on import option here, which by default is auto. You can specifically choose which type of material you'd like to create or choose not to create a material automatically on import. It's important to note that this preference here does not adjust how Cinema 4D behaves when you create materials by dragging them from the Substance Asset Manager. It only affects what happens when you manually load a substance using the load substance command. So that's a quick look at how substances are mapped into the Cinema 4D material system and how you can make adjustments to that default mapping. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please like, share, and visit Cineversity.com for more great Cinema 4D tutorials and resources.